Did you know you can add the daisy knot pattern to almost any frame? Stay tuned to find out how. Nicole here from Bochinat Macrame and in today's tutorial we will be going over how to apply the macrame daisy knot pattern onto a bear shaped frame. The daisy knot pattern is one of my favorite knot patterns just because you can create several different variations of it with different colored cords and it's also super versatile because it's a senate pattern so whenever you require a senate for keychains, bag straps, wall hangings, plant hangers, the daisy knot patterns can be a great fit. For this particular pattern, I wanted to spice up a bear ring that I have with the daisy knot patterns. By learning this technique on how to apply the daisy knot pattern onto this frame, you can apply this knot pattern onto almost any shaped frame. This project would make a really great home decor item or for the nursery, and it's very simple and minimalistic. There's not too much going on here but you can do more with it if you want. This can just be the start of a dream catcher if you want. You can add cords underneath and continue knotting another design. The daisy knot pattern isn't the easiest knot pattern to make, but I will be going it over step by step, so hopefully you guys will be able to follow along with it. If you are a beginner with macrame and you wanna brush up on some of your knot work before attempting the daisy knot pattern, I do recommend going over the vertical left head knot and the half inch knot because we will be using those two knots to make the daisy knot pattern. This one is such a fun one to make. I really hope you guys will enjoy it. If you guys do, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And with that said, let's jump right in. Listed here are the materials and the cord lengths required for this project. The frame I'll be using today is a 12 inch bear ring. The bare ears are added on top of a round frame. The round circle part of the frame is 10 inches in diameter, and then the length of the ears are approximately two inches. So adding the 10 with the two means a 12 inch length bare frame. This is a very sturdy metal frame and it's perfect for various macrame projects. If you're interested in seeing this one and other variations we carry, you can check out the tagged product in the description below. The cord I'll be using is a 5mm Egyptian cotton cord from our Lush line. Now Egyptian cotton means it is a really soft premium cotton. The fibers are super fine giving it a super soft feel along with a nice shiny texture to it. This is a great thickness to work with if you're trying to make larger knots and this cord stays sturdy fairly well which means it's easy to knot with. The three colors that I'll be using for this pattern is rose dust, sage, and buttercream. Now you don't necessarily need three separate colors. For this pattern you will only see two colors on the front. I've used a third color for the anchor cords just so that you can clearly see which cords I'm working with in this pattern. If you're interested in checking out this cord, I'll also link it in the description below. To begin, we are going to be working with some very long cords because we're going to make a daisy pattern all around the circle part of the ring first. With a 300 centimeter long cord, what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle spot and then we're going to pull the ends together and we're just going to wrap it around the ring. So pull on the ends until you reach the middle spot and then the two ends are even. We're going to bring it up on the right side of the ring and then we're going to create a loop on top by crisscrossing the cord ends on top of one another. Okay. 
getting our super long of pink strand of cord ready at 12.5 meters long folded in half we're going to take the loop end bring it underneath the sage green loop and then we're going to make a reverse lark's head knot here Pull on both ends of the sage cord to tighten and also pull on the pink cord ends to tighten the reverse arcs head knot as well. Make sure the pink cord ends are even and also the sage cord ends are relatively even as well. Now because we're working with super long cords, we're just going to roll up each strand of cord first, especially the pink ones because they're super long. Leave around a meter or so left and then use an elastic band and place it around the bundle. Do this for all the long strands of cords. And now we can make our first daisy pattern. What we're going to do is take the middle left pink cord and we're going to make a half hitch knot out to the left side. This is the start of the first vertical lark's head knot on the left side. Now we're going to reverse it and make a half hitch knot to the inside. And this is our first vertical lark's head knot. Now we're going to do the same thing on the right side, mirroring what we just did on the left. So we're going to go towards the right side first and then inside after. Now, if at any time in the tutorial you are unsure of the knots that I'm talking about and you want to practice them individually first, you can do so by downloading our free 50 Knots and Senates ebook over on boshinot.com or you can watch our free 50 Knots and Senates video also on our YouTube channel. Now we're going to crisscross the two pink middle cords. And then we're going to take our beige cord at 420 centimeters long, fold it in half. We're going to make a reverse Lars head knot here. Once done, pull on the pink cords to tighten. Now we're going to finish the bottom half of the daisy by taking the left pink cord. We're going to go out and in again with another vertical lark's head knot. So make a half hitch knot to the left and then reverse it and go half hitch knot towards the inside. And what I mean by outside and inside is where the working cord is pointing towards. Now repeat the same pattern on the right side, mirroring what we just did on the left. Now take the two sage green cords Fold it on top of the two pink cords, crisscrossing them, and then take the two pink cords. We're going to make a half hitch knot on both sides. Take the right pink cord, place it on top and through the loop and pull it down through the right side. And then pull on the knot to tighten. Take the middle left cord, pull it through the loop and through the left side, then pull on the knot to tighten. Now pull on the sage green cord ends on both sides to tighten the daisy knot. And we have now completed our first daisy knot pattern. I'm going to show you guys another daisy pattern directly below. And that's because for the next daisy pattern and all the remaining daisy patterns, we do have to do something a little bit differently with the beige cords.
So starting again, we are going to take the left pink cord, make a vertical lark's head knot on the left side. Now repeat again on the right side. Now crisscross the pink cords on top of one another and then before we take the beige cords from the back and attach them onto the pink corded loops, we're going to wrap the beige cords behind the ring. So in opposite direction, I took the right cord, wrapped it over to the left side and through the ring and then the left cord through the back and through the right side of the ring. So this is what it looks like after we crisscross them. And then bring the pink loop back down and we're going to make a half hitch knot on both sides. Now pull on the pink cords and the beige cords to tighten the knots. Now bringing the green cord back down on the left and right sides, make another vertical lark's head knot, starting with a half inch knot on the outside and then half inch knot on the inside. And now complete the rest of the pattern just like how we had completed the first daisy pattern above. Now repeat these daisy patterns all the way up to the other side of this frame. Once you're here, once you've done the entire bottom side of the bear frame and you're at the ears and you're not sure how to go past the ears and continue to the other side, this just has to do with taking the beige cords at the back and through the ear part. So it's nothing different than what we have been doing already, but this time some of the cords will just be going through the ears. So I'll show you what that means here when we get to that part.
So here's the part where we switch over the cords on both sides from behind. So the left cord here was from the right side and then the right cord is here on the right side and this time I'm going to pull it up through the ear. And now you can use these cords to attach onto the middle two pink cords with half inch knots. And now you can complete the rest of the pattern all the way to the other side. Now to secure the pattern at the back without any glue and without any sewing, all we're going to do is take the ends at the back and we're going to tie a series of double overhand knots. To make sure that there's no gap there, we're going to bring the cords up a bit to the starting point. You can see that when we started the daisy pattern, we don't have that part of the beige pattern where it's wrapped around the ring. So we're just going to thread the cords there and then make the double overhand knots. So I'm threading the sage green cords through to the other side and we're going to do the same thing with the left cord. We're going to bring it through to the right side then tie a double overhand knot. And then do the same thing with the rest of the cords. So once that is done for all of the cords, you can now trim off all of the excess and then you can tuck these short ends through the loops at the back if that works or I just trim them so that they're super short and they will just hide nicely in the back. Now that we're done with the ring part, we're going to do the same thing with the ears. Starting with an 80 centimeter strand of green cord, we're going to weave it through the right side of the ear here. Then we're going to overlap the cords on top of one another and then taking a strand of pink cord at 250 centimeters long, we're going to make a reverse lark's head knot. Make a vertical lark's head knot on both sides with the pink cords.
Now taking an 100 centimeter long beige cord, attach it onto the two middle pink cords with a reverse arc head knot. And then you can finish off the daisy pattern just like how we have done all the other ones. Now slide this daisy pattern to the top and then now we're going to make two consecutive daisy patterns below ensuring that we weave the beige cords at the back of the ring again. Now we've reached the top of the ear and now we're going to try and bend the pattern over and then continue with the other side of the pattern for three more daisy patterns. It helps to start bending the pattern over the right direction so that when you're making this next daisy pattern, it is going to be bent that way. And now you can make two more daisy patterns directly underneath. Now that we're done, take the cord ends to the back and secure with double overhand knots again. Trim off the excess cords and then repeat the same pattern on the other ear. And we are now complete with the daisy bear pattern. That concludes our daisy bear pattern. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. This project is actually a great Easter project as well. If you're looking for a fun DIY Easter craft to make, this may be it for you. You can easily turn this into a daisy bunny pattern as well. All you have to do is make the ears a little bit longer on this bear frame. We offer these frames in various shapes. If you guys are interested in checking out the collection, I've tagged them in the description below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this project. Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.